if anybody knows me they know that i hate being vulnerable that's just not in my vocabulary i don't like being vulnerable and i admire people who find being vulnerable very easy and i don't like to speak from a place of sadness but this video needs to happen because i feel like if i don't use my voice to express how i feel and inspire and encourage you to use your voice as well I think it will do more harm to me knowing I'm going to bed and not doing my part than to actually come on here and receive hate or people not approve of what I say. So this is a sad situation. We're all human. We deserve justice. But with that said, when you add the backdrop of racism to this whole situation, the element of racism, the pot starts to boil. And when the pot boils, if you don't take off the lid, it will blow the lid off. And right now what you're seeing, you might see it as chaos, but it's a sign of a community that has not been heard, a community that has not been addressed, a community who's gone without justice for many, 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 many years. Years. I hope that you will have an open ear and a willing heart to receive the message I'm trying to say because I'm giving this message in love, not in attack, in love, peace, in unity right now. Hey lovely people, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a very interesting um, conversation and not the typical video that I normally do. If you're new to my channel, hey girl, hey. On this channel, I inspire women to create a peaceful home, peaceful, beautiful home, by the way. Keep a tight wallet and inspiring you to keep a sound mind. With that said, I feel like there's no way that I can inspire you in those categories, but not inspire you to use your voice. And it's been a very hard week to digest. And if you're not aware of all that's going on in the US or in other countries, you might be living slightly under a rock. <laughs> but today I just want to give my thoughts briefly on all that's going on and with the death of in a man who was murdered by law the people we trust to protect us and i know that a lot of people are trying to break apart the situation and try to justify and find ways to make it the fault of the man who died at the hands of the law but there's no excuse, no way around it that this is okay. And being the fact that he is black, it adds another layer of frustration, especially amongst the black community. We can sit here all day and dispute. Well, every culture, there's always bad apples. In every career, there's always bad apples. But the issue at hand here is not about the bad apples in every culture, in every race, in every career, every field. The topic at hand is the ongoing racism that's been going on, not only in America, but around the world. I can't speak for everyone around the world, but I can definitely speak for what's going on here in the U.S. What you see is going on is the tipping point of years of frustration for a lot of people this is an uncomfortable situation but i'm challenging you to get out of your comfort to speak about it this is where change starts yes there's so many other things going on in the world yes we got coronavirus going on yes we got people being murdered from different cultures and countries happening right now all the time these things happen all the time in every culture but I have a friend who, who, who on social media, who posted the best quote that describes what I'm saying right now. Matter of fact, let me, let me pull it up. Her post says, 
Saying all lives matter as a response to Black Lives Matter is like saying the fire department should spray down all houses in a neighborhood even though only one house is on fire. Because all houses matter, right? Yes, your house do matter. But your house is not the one on fire. I don't know any other way to express what we're trying to say and the movement that's going on right now than what this post is saying. Everybody's house is important. Everybody has the right to live in a safe home. If all of our houses are not on fire and it's just one house on fire, it just makes sense that all the other houses should rally around that one fire to make sure that fire is taken out. And this is the situation we're at right now. The house is on fire. The black community is on fire. They've been on fire for years now. But now the flyer is blazing. And it's the state of an emergency for black communities around the world because they're at the boiling point. So is it okay to be looting? Absolutely not. Never. I would never recommend that people will steal from others ever. Is starting a fire okay? No. I don't think it's necessary to start a fire and loot, still create violence just to prove a point and seek justice. That is not the way at all. So by no means me giving this video is condoning violence because it's not okay. But like in every society, every culture, every career, and in every protest, there's always going to be that group of people who choose to take a different direction. But I ask of you not to focus on that, but focus on the bigger picture. You can play a role. If you've been inspired by anything else I've done on my channel, the few videos you may have watched, if you've been inspired any kind of way by my videos to make your house look better, to minimize your life, fix your finances, I hope that you will take my words to inspire you to use your voice will be also appreciated as well. And again, this is not an attack. This is not a black versus white. I totally understand that there will be some people who will never understand or know what it feels like to be black. And that's okay. <laughs> There's no way I can make you understand that. But if you see injustice and it's moving you and it's hurting you to see it happen, this is your chance. I'm letting you know you have a voice. Speak to your friends. You'll be shocked. The people who are around you actually don't care for black people. You'll be shocked. And you probably won't be shocked because you might already know you have some friends that are a little racist or family member or whoever that might be, you know, out there. And that's why I'm leaving it up to you. I did my part. I spoke to 3,900 of you out there. And I'm telling you, use your voice. And I'm not speaking only to white people. I'm speaking to Spanish people. I'm speaking to Asian people. I'm speaking to all cultures. You play a role. Because in every culture, everyone feels that they can't do something. They can't change the narrative. They can't have conversations about change. And I challenge you to understand that you do have the power to change the narrative within your small space. But please, don't make the excuse that you don't know what to do, that, oh, this is not something I have control over. Because not everybody is willing to go out and go protest. Not everybody is willing to put their lives on the line to walk out on the streets to prove a point that this is not okay. You can sit in the comfort of your home and simply use your voice to speak on social media and not in a riot-like form, but simply saying this is not okay and that black people deserve the same treatment. Asian people deserve the same treatment. All cultures deserve the same treatment. We all deserve 
to have justice. But right now, we're speaking about the house that's on fire. And that's the human black race. Yes, human, we are human as well. Remember, it's the human race. We shouldn't get to choose and pick which race gets more help than the other. Racism is an issue because the people who see it choose to not say anything at all. So if you're white or white privilege, whatever you wanna see, whichever way you wanna see it, you have a voice and your voice can be in any way that is accessible to you right now. I have a camera that I talk to every single week to provide information and inspiration on how, on home decor, um, DIYs, minimalism. So I have a voice, that same voice I use to inform people and um, encourage people to change their lives, their homes, and their living expenses and their, and their way of life. I can use that same voice to encourage you and inspire you to use your voice, to speak to your other friends, your peers, that we will never be able to have a conversation with. Your white friends that you, oh, that will never have a conversation with a black person, regardless of how educated they are, regardless of how smart they are, how rich they are, there are white people out there who will not be interested in having a conversation with the black person. They might not outwardly say it, but this is the reality, and I'm sure you know it. Don't let racism be the elephant in the room in your household. Don't let the issue of racism be the elephant in the room in your friendships, in your family, in your career. Stand up for what you're feeling. And today, I'm here to say that silent no longer gets a pass. The friends that say that they love and care dearly for their black friends, today you don't get a pass to be silent. You need to use your voice and speak to your friends, speak to your neighbors. And I'm not telling you you have to go out there and go protest, but I'm saying in your everyday conversations that you normally have with your family, your friends, whoever, your coworkers, I think it's okay to bring up the topic and say that, you know what, this is not right. What can we do? This is something that needs to be changed. Go to your platform, speak to somebody. And you know what? I think it pains me even more as a Christian. Yes, I'm a Christian. Just in case those who don't know, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the trying God. I believe he died and rose again on the third day. Now that that's out of the way, I think it pains me even more to see that there's other Christians who don't see the heart of the situation and that it doesn't pain them as much as it should as a Christian. Forget the outside world. Forget the world, the, 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 what the world thinks right now. But as a Christian brother and sister, this, should, this situation should pain you enough to say something. Our one common denominator is Christ. Jesus is our one common denominator. As a family of all races, cultures, colors, nationalities, our one common denominator is Jesus Christ. And if you are a believer of Jesus Christ and who he is, then you automatically should feel the need to say something. So as a Christian, do a part and use your voice.